Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this video, we are going to talk about how you can use in-memory MongoDB database in the application. With most of the backend applications, the database is one of the most crucial part. When the code that you are testing has to touch a database, the amount of setup that you have to do gets quite a bit more complicated. Obviously, you don't want to run your testing code on your production database because the risk of compromising your user's data. In this lesson, we are going to set up a new in-memory version of MongoDB database and then tell our app to use that when running our test. We are going to use the npm package called MongoDB memory server. Basically, this package will spin up a fresh in-memory MongoDB server that you can connect with the Mongos and then you use for your testing environment. Traditionally, to create a MongoDB server, you have to open the Atlas website, create a new project, create a new cluster inside it and then you have to add a new user and add your current IP address to access the database. Now instead of doing this, we can make in-memory MongoDB server mock the database operation. If you want to know more about MongoDB memory server, you can just head on to this GitHub repository and find more about this library. We'll put this link in the description of this video. Now let me just create a new project and show you how you can use this MongoDB in-memory server in the Express application. So I'm going to open a new terminal and create a new directory. So I'm going to say here mkdir server, enter into this directory. So I'm going to say here cd server, and then here I'm going to say npm init y. So this will just initialize this folder as an npm package. You will notice. Just out of that, here I'm going to say npm i for install, and then I'm going to install express, mongoose, and nodemon. I'm going to install all these three packages inside my server. So when I press enter, this will install all these three packages in my server project. Just after that, once we have all these three packages, I also need to add here a package called MongoDB memory server. I'm going to clear the screen and here I'm going to say npm iPhone install iPhone D to save this package as development dependency. And then I'm going to say here MongoDB iPhone memory server and when i press enter this is going to install this package in my project just after that i'm going to open the package.json here i'm going to get it of this test command and here start and say here nodemon server.js now because we don't have the server.js let me just create that first so here i'm going to say server.js just after that i'm going to back to the server here i'm going to say import express from express now, because we are using the import statement in the Node.js application, we need to specify here type module. Now, just after that, let me create my Express server. So I'm going to see here constant app is equal to Express. So this will just initialize this app, and I'm going to say here app dot use Express dot JSON, and then I'm going to say here constant port is equal to process dot env dot port or 8080. If you have the .env file with the port variable, then use that. Otherwise, use this port name. Just after that, I'm going to add here app.get and I'm going to create here the get request on the root route with request and response parameter, something like this. And then add here try and catch block. So in the try, it's simply going to say here response.json home request. And in the cache block, simply going to say here error and say response.json error. And I'm going to put this error in the object. So we pass here object. Just after that, right down here, I'm going to say app.listen. And I'm going to say here port. I'm going to specify this port name, this one, and then call here a callback function like this. Inside this callback function, let me say console.log. Let me use the backtick operator and say server connected to HTTP localhost. Specify here dollar. I'm going to specify the port name. So when the server started, we're going to have this message in the console. Let me just save the changes and start the development server. So clear the screen. npm start. When I press enter, we're going to have this message HTTP localhost 8080. So the server is now started on the port. 8080. Just after that, once we have the simple express server, we can now create 
or MongoDB database. Now, as you know, we are not using the cloud MongoDB database. Instead, we are using the in-memory MongoDB database. So to create that, let me just create a new folder here, database, and create a new file inside it. The file name is connection.js. That's upon you. You can specify any name to this file. The first thing you need is to import MongoDB memory server. So you have to say here import in the object, you have to say Mongo memory server. And you have to import this from the MongoDB memory server. And just out of that, I'm going to create here a sync function with the name connect. And inside this connect, we need to first create a server and then get the URL from it. So you have to say here await Mongo memory server dot create. You have to call the create method of this object. So once you call it, this is going to create a new server every time when you restart your server. Just after that, you store that object inside a variable. So we say here constant Mongo server and we store that object inside this Mongo server variable. Just after that, using this Mongo server, you can get the current MongoDB URL. So we can see here constant Mongo URI is equal to and say Mongo server dot get URI. Using this function, you can get the current URI of the MongoDB database. This statement will automatically create in memory server in your machine. Now, once you have your URL, you can now specify that URL to the Mongos. So, you have to say here import Mongos from Mongos. And now you can simply specify here await Mongos dot connect. And you have to specify here Mongo URI this variable and if you want you can specify the database name as well so let's suppose if i specify here comma and in the object if i specify here db name which is testing db then i can simply say here console.log in the backtick operator i'm going to say mongo db successfully connected to and then i'm going to specify here dollar curly braces and specify the mongo uri variable here so we can print the mongo uri variable inside a console just for that you have to just export this function so we're simply going to say here export default that's it there's the changes back to the server now what i have to do is instead of this app.listen i want to listen to the server only when we have the valid connection i want to start the server only when we have the valid mongodb connection so what we can do is at the top here i can say import connect from the database connect and don't forget to specify here dot js then i'm going to call this connect method this one right, right inside the server let me close this package file and right down here i'm going to say connect we call this function and this is going to return a promise you can notice and now you can say here dot then and you call here a function something like this and you also can call the catch method right down here with error and now when there is a valid connection so we're going to pass this app.listen inside this then something like this and inside this catch we're going to say console.log invalid database connection and just after that what we're going to do is we're going to grab this app and put that inside a try and catch block so we pass here try inside this try we have this app.listen method and inside a catch in the error right here i'm going to say console.log and specify here cannot connect to the server that's it let me just save the changes that's it now let me save this file you can see we are going to first have the mongodb url and then we have this message server connected to the local host 8080 so now once there is a successful connection to the mongodb database only then we're going to have this server connection what if i specify the invalid mongodb url here like this. when i save this file you can see we're going to have here a message called invalid database connection we're going to have this message as a response so this is not going to start any server so we won't get any result so now we have the mongodb url and we use this url right here inside this mongos.connect this is going to create a new database and now i can store different data 
inside a MongoDB. Let me show you how you can insert data inside this MongoDB database. So what we are going to do is, let me just create a new folder here, model, and inside it, I'm going to create a new file called user.model.js and here I'm going to say import mongos from the mongos library and I'm going to say here constant user model is equal to new mongos.schema and I'm going to create a new schema here with just a one field username and the type of the username is the start of that here I'm going to say export default and I'm going to say here mongoose.model and then I'm going to specify here model name user and then specify here user model. So this is going to create a new collection inside this MongoDB database with the name user and we can also see here mongoose.models.users. So this statement is going to say if we already have the user model or you can say we already have the user collection inside a MongoDB database, then use it. Otherwise, create a new one. So, once you have the schema, let me save the changes back to the server right here. At the top, right up here, I'm going to create a new app.post. So, I'm going to create here a new HTTP request. So, let me add here a comment. And I'm going to say here this is a type of post request. And to access this post request, you have to head on to HTTP localhost 8080 on the add endpoint so we specify here single code specify add something like this and say here request and response just like this and just out of that i'm going to see here try and catch block inside this catch let me first add response.json we are simply going to return error here from this endpoint with invalid add request and just for that inside this try here i'm going to say constant user is equal to new user model so we first need to import here the user model from the model user model .js file use this user model we say new user model and in the object we specify the value to the field we specify username and the value is going to be daily tuition just after that, I'm going to specify a semicolon here, call the user variable dot save, and we save all this data in the MongoDB database. And then we call here then method. So if there is a successful connection, then call a function. In, and inside this, I'm going to return a response dot JSON. And we're simply going to say here MSG data added successfully. And if there is an error, we catch that error inside this catch like this and specify here return statement and i'm going to say here response.json and we're simply going to return the error just like this and then inside this get right here instead of just a response.json we're going to call this user model so i'm going to call this user model here something like this dot find and we have to find all the data so we pass here object dot then and inside this we call data response.json and then we return that data if there is an error i'm going to catch that error right here something like this and simply say here response.json return the error that's it let me save the changes and see the server it started on http localhost 8080 let me just test these endpoints let me copy this command first specify that here this is a type of get request and we can access this endpoint using this url there it is and now i'm going to open thunder client to test this api i already have this extension in the vs code if you don't then just back to the extension tab and search for thunderbolt you have to install this extension in the vs code and then you will have this option click on it this will open a new activity tab and right from here you can make the http request so what we are going to do is i'm going to first make a get request so i'm going to select this and we are going to make a request on the local host 8080 and when i click on the send button you can see i'm not going to get anything here this is because we don't have any data inside this mongodb database right now let me just add some data inside it 
So what we are going to do is I'm going to make a post request on the localhost 8080 on the endpoint add. When I click on send button, you can see I'm going to have here a message called data added successfully. And if I make a get request again, I'm going to have the MongoDB database as a response. So inside this in memory MongoDB database, we are going to have all this data. If I make a request again, if I click on the send button and add this data again inside a database, then I'm going to have two records as a response. You can notice. And if I back to the server and restart the server, if I resave this file and restart the server, back to the get request and click on the send, this will get rid of all the in memory data from the MongoDB database. MongoDB is going to create a new MongoDB URL and specify that to this Mongos. So whenever you restart your server, you're going to lose your in-memory data. So this database is very useful for testing the React application. So next time, if you want to test your database, use in-memory database first, and then create a new Cloud Atlas MongoDB database. So using this technique, you can create a new API using this in-memory MongoDB database. And when you create your API, you can get it off both this statement right from here and specify your MongoDB Atlas URL right inside this mongo uri variable so i hope you understand how to work with in memory mongodb database with node and express if you find anything useful make sure to press the like button share this video with your friends subscribe for more latest videos that is all for now i will see you in the next one